Hello, how are you doing? And welcome to Yesteryear's Mac Games. Today we're taking a look at what may well be the best Jezbel clone ever made. And I've had a look around. There really isn't anything that looks anywhere near as fun as this. So, for situations where you positively absolutely feel the need to divide and constrict a series of spherical hazards, yeah. Barrack is the game for you. Well, it was only a matter of time until I covered a game published by Ambrosia. I'm going to go out on a limb here and suggest that the Ambrosia brand was probably the most well-known of the Mac-centric shareware organisations, having brought games like Bubble Trouble, Aperion, Mars Rising and of course the Escape Velocity trilogy onto the Mac scene. As of 2017, the company still technically exists, although they haven't developed anything in years, and complaints of having to wait long periods of time for someone to send them license keys are all over its forum. Barrack then was created by Greg Lovett, who explained in an interview for Ambrosia's newsletter that the incentive behind the creation of this game was born from being unable to find a Mac version of Kix, and feeling that there was more that could have been done with the concept. The initial prototype was apparently quite different to the final release, and Greg even hinted on letting it out, which would be fascinating, although it probably won't happen. So as things were adapted, the game we know as Barrack today became more akin to Jezbel, albeit far more advanced. Jezbel, for those curious, was a game from 1992, and published as part of a Microsoft Entertainment pack. So, how does one play Barrack? Start a game, and you're presented with a top-down view of balls, which traverse the play area in whichever way they feel like. The grey thingamy you can see creating lines is your shooter. Can't say I'm entirely sure what it's supposed to be, it certainly doesn't look like the fella from the splash screen. This, nevertheless, is what you control. Screenshots shared through the Ambrosia Times during the game's development show that a number of other designs were considered before they settled on greyness. Move it around by wiggling the mouse, and discharge the payload by clicking. The lines that come out on either side are what you use to split the play area and begin capturing territory. If a ball should strike your line before it's finished, it stops, goes, and deducts one of your lives. The level ends when you've captured 80% of the playing field. The following screen tots up your remaining bonus, the number of balls you manage to isolate, and bonus capture area. Any multiplier you have acquired is also applied here. This screen is key to getting yourself onto the leaderboard. You can earn some major points with some good figures and a 4x multiplier. The highest figure I have on footage comes courtesy of the most enraging of protagonists, Bosco the Shark. Bosco starts appearing at around level 10 and flails unpredictably around the play area, destroying you on touch. Tricky stuff. But there are points to be had if you can time things just right and capture a piece of territory with Bosco still in it. You net 800 points for your bonus every time you do this, or 8,000 if he's howled and sped up. Lives in Barrack are easy come easy go. You can grab a heap of them from a bonus or certain goodies that are spawned and you can just as easily throw away heaps in mere seconds trying to split two particularly fast balls. When game over eventually comes your way, Bosco will be there in his sandals and awful shirt to mock you. Shark aside, it's the balls that are your main concern. They come in a variety of flavours, with the vast majority being pawn balls. Lacking any special characteristics, the pawn balls float around at various speeds and are relatively straightforward to isolate. The others, however, present opportunities and challenges that make Barrack's gameplay really stand out from similar games. Get yourself to level 5 and you'll encounter your first nuke ball. These bouncing botherations are atomically unstable and when confined in a small enough space, they will explode, taking all other balls within the same box with it. None of them will return in subsequent levels, so making best use of the nuke balls to wipe out as many other balls as possible is key to keeping the playing field as manageable as possible. Be careful when you're doing this. The last thing you want to do is waste a nuke ball, like this. Other types include the orange fruit balls, which are the only ones that collide with others. Slow on their own, they rocket around the play area whenever another ball hits them. Speeding fruit balls have the capability to alter the bounce trajectory of a nuke ball. 
The eyeballs are called sentry balls. These change direction to home into your shots. Pretty straightforward. Ooze balls are bright green and need to be isolated immediately. Failure to do that will see them divide into a number of other balls. You can hear the ticking. These are literal time bombs. In the only example I caught where I failed to sort these out in time, this one thankfully created a nuke, so I can effectively reverse what it did. Smallest box I've ever seen a nuke in. Under normal circumstances, they explode well before the box is this small. The final ball type is made of glass. Three hits from one of your shots, or another glass ball, will see them smash to bits. Glass balls can play a big part in getting a fat bonus. Isolate one in a big section, take away as much space from other balls as you can, and then sacrifice a few lives to smash the glass ball and hopefully net a nice overachievement percentage. The last thing to mention are the yummies. Yummies spawn from a yummy cake and can be collected by having it collide with an active shot. Thunderbolts speed up your regular shot marginally. Keys grant extra lives. Magnets can be used to attract all the pawn balls to the side of a box for an easy shot. And the laser cartridges allow the firing of a supercharged shot. Overall then, there are heaps going on here that keep the game manic and fresh. Additional balls are added at the start of each level, and there doesn't seem to be a set order of what type you get when, so each playthrough will be quite different. The sound effects are quite silly, and deliberately so, as this was a trait Ambrosia used to differentiate itself from other shareware developers. The music's an odd case. It's been playing throughout the video. You may have noticed it's about a minute in length. While most Mac games use MIDI's, MODs and MADH formats for the music data, Barrack opted to provide its tune through looping sound files. Having noticed that the sound files don't fit properly, I've actually snipped together what we're hearing from the individual files, as a direct recording is immensely distracting. The README hints that this is down to certain video cards, so unfortunately the only fix to the botched music is to try different hardware. This issue aside, Barrack will run on most classic Macs, so both 68K and PowerPC models. It will also run under emulation, although with a peculiar bug. Balls that spawn in for the first time will not move an inch, making the game a lot easier. Beyond level 10, Barrack really is quite a challenge, and very addictive. Fighting for the high scores is rewarding and frustrating, and a bit of luck really helps out. Yeah. And that's it for this video on Barrack. For more videos on old Mac games, why not take a peek at some of the other ones that I've done? New videos will come periodically, so I would very much encourage you to subscribe. So until the next time, thanks ever so much for watching.